fear, job loss, illness, stress, the, the results of the global pandemic and lockdowns we're all experiencing. But did you also know there's an uptick in online porn viewing? For those stuck at home, the mental stress takes its toll. No wonder mental health officials warn us about the increase in depression, suicide, and addictive behaviors. God created us to be in relationships with each other, the face-to-face -face kind. Well, I'm so thankful for video chat technology. At this point in the, in the shutdown, there's, it's no longer enough for me. I need face-to-face -face time with my friends. Addictive behaviors like porn addiction don't go away easily. And the more reasons we have to be online, work, school stuff, connection with friends, board gaming, whatever, definitely doesn't help. Our new way of life is like pushing an alcoholic up to the bar and saying, here, struggling porn addict, get online for more hours every day. It takes daily hard work to deal with an addiction and any associated false beliefs that trigger that addiction. I have no idea how Dave and I would have battled through his addiction and my depression had we not been able to meet face-to-face -face with our restoration team and coaches. This community connection provided the necessary safety net for us to heal. We craved healing and depended on the physical support of this team. Honestly, sometimes the only thing that helped was a hug. Well, fightthenewdrug.org the fight sponsors No Porn November to raise awareness about the negative effects porn addiction has on your brain and relationships. That's a tough battle in today's global climate. And while it's disheartening to read the growing tens for online porn use, this information simply raises my awareness to talk about the issues associated with porn use. Because you and I don't have to participate in it or even accept it. Maybe you've heard or read things recently like, online porn, porn viewing doesn't hurt anyone, it enhances your marriage, or all men view porn. Well, these are lies, and I would like to look at each one of them a little bit more carefully today. Let's look at the first one, lie number one. Online porn viewing doesn't hurt anyone. Porn is not a victimless or harmless addiction. For the addict, loneliness, shame, and self-hatred dog their days. Dave describes this as the cycle of shame, and it's an apt description because porn promises control that may be lacking in the addict's life. Every click provides a rush of good feeling chemicals to the brain. So when your world feels out of control or stressful, the temptation to get that chemical rush makes sense. And that's the lure. The, rush, the rut that rush digs into his brain is a glaring example of someone who is hurt. But what about the people who are forced to participate in making these videos? Some are recorded even without their knowledge. The link between pornography and sex trafficking cannot be ignored. By some estimates, 4.8 million people are trapped or forced into sexual exploitation globally, according to the International Labor Organization. In one survey done by Thorn, 63% of underage sex trafficking victims said they had been advertised or sold online. Pornography is not a victimless crime. Besides all of these stats, every person involved in pornography is someone's daughter or son. They are real people being exploited for another sexual appetite, and that breaks my heart. Lie number two, pornography enhances your marriage. Well, according to a recent article at verywellmind.org, researchers looked at the link between pornography and marriage. They discovered five areas where porn use by either partner breaks down the marriage relationship. I don't have time to go into those today, but you can uh, click the link uh, on my website to access this article. Women particularly suffer from an attack to their self-esteem and self-worth, according to this article. Well, who could, have, who could measure up to what your husband is viewing on a screen? And I ask, why would I want to? Men who consistently watch porn objectify women and tend to struggle with true intimacy because porn allows the viewer to get the rush without the vulnerability of a relationship. And the third lie, I think this one bugs me the most, all men watch porn. This is a gross generalization, and gross generalizations are false. If they aren't 100% true, then they are a lie. There is a large percentage of men who view porn, but not all. There are men who never look at porn or never were tempted to look at porn. So to lump these men in with those who struggle with a porn addiction is wrong. And it's, the statement removes individual choice from one half of our human race. 
and honestly, we're dishonoring our men. If we choose to justify negative behavior, if we justify a negative behavior, we're trying to excuse it. The Reddit community NoFap, in which members challenge themselves to give up porn, has garnered more than 140,000 members. The group provides support, camaraderie, advice, and notably success stories from those looking to recover from porn-induced sexual dysfunction, stop objectifying and establish meaningful connections, improve interpersonal relationships, and live a more fulfilling life. One needs only to peruse the wealth of success stories posted there to find that men, even those recovering from serious addictive behavior, are not powerless to resist it. Every person makes their choices. I did, and so did Dave. And then he worked very hard to overcome his underlying self-worth issues so he didn't medicate with porn. I worked hard to overcome my underlying self-belief issues to overcome depression and a food addiction. Instead of excusing harmful behavior, uh, harmful behavior or harshly judging it, I'd love to see everyone champion those who fight to overcome. Thank you, fightthenewdrug.org, for tackling the pornography addiction issue head on. And thank you to the brave souls raising their hand and saying, I don't want to live like this anymore. If you'd like to learn more about how you can help with No Porn in November, please visit fightthenewdrug.org and take the pledge to choose a different path. If you're a wife of a porn addict, I understand your pain and confusion. I've been there. God allowed this addiction to invade our marriage and home, but our story in marriage didn't end there. God, in his grace and mercy, restored our marriage. Well, no, actually, he gave us a brand new marriage based on authenticity, authenticity, hope, and truth. And I am grateful because it could have turned out very differently. If you need someone to listen, please reach out. I offer an understanding heart, practical tools to help you truly heal, and all without judgment. You didn't choose this addiction, but you can make a choice for a better tomorrow. Hop on over to KirstenDSamuel.com. That's K-I-R-S-T-E-N, D as in Diane, Samuel, S-A-M-U-E-L.com. And kick, kick, click on that big blue button. I'd love to talk with you.